we need to be working towards creating sustainable communities and sustainable societies. One of the first steps, and maybe one of the most profound and important steps, is to relocalise. And a good place to start with this is relocalising our food systems. The critical issue today is how to build and nurture sustainable communities. Uh, to create sustainable communities and sustainable societies is really the central challenge of our time. We really need to be rethinking the way in which we produce food, distribute it and, and the decisions we make about, about consumption. A sustainable society needs to be fueled by solar energy and indeed it has become clear over the last few decades that our current system of fossil fuels is patently unsustainable because of the connection with carbon and CO2 and climate change. So we need to move from uh, the fossil fuel age to uh, the solar age. We now have the scientific evidence that shows to us that climate change is in fact a reality and is going to pose significant social and environmental problems into the future. And food and, and localising food is such an important part of addressing climate change and looking to simplify our lives and, and to live in ways that are more environmentally responsible. The distance our food travels, the amount of embodied water in it, the amount of embodied energy and also the ecological footprint of our food is enormous. Our food systems are unsustainable. The average wage that a, that a coffee farmer is receiving from the, from the sale of coffee in Uganda is about equivalent to, to five Australian dollars a year. Um, that's not enough to send children to school, that's not enough for basic health care, it's, it's not enough to be sure that you have a reasonable roof over your head. Uh, but at the same time, Australians are paying $4 for a cup of coffee. Well, certainly local food has a lot of health benefits, particularly because of the fact that the less we need to transport the food, the less we actually lose the nutritional content of that food. For example, as soon as we pick a food or pick produce, we tend to lose a lot of vitamin C, which is a very unstable vitamin. The more we connect with food, the more we question how it's grown, where it's come from and the impact that it's having. We're eating food that we don't necessarily know under what conditions it's been grown. Um, and particularly with things like genetically engineered seeds and now nanotechnologies being applied to the food system, there's more reason than ever to want to know where your food comes from and to want to know what you're putting into your body. Sustainable societies have at their foundation a sustainable food system. To recreate this, we need to learn from nature, from cultures of sustainability and from societies that have successfully adapted in the face of crisis. In an ecosystem there's no waste, that uh, what is waste for one species is food for the next. The traditional culture of Ladakh, or Little Tibet, in the northernmost part of India, is one of sustainability, beauty and simplicity. It is from societies like this that we can learn a great deal in our transitioning towards a post-carbon society. Everything came from the earth and was returned to it. Understanding of and connection to community and the local environment were at the core of their success. As we are looking to address issues of peak oil and climate change, it is important to look to societies that have experienced a crisis situation. Cuban society has inspired the world with its ability to adapt to critical fuel shortages and find new ways to feed its people through relocalisation and urban agriculture. All vacant spaces in the city were turned to food production. Rooftops, balconies, parks, schools, roadsides. People were resourced with tools, plants and information. One of the key lessons from looking to sustainable cultures and places like Cuba is to relocalise. And there's a rapidly growing movement around the world to do this. The design of our cities and towns could benefit from incorporating agriculture into its urban and peri-urban areas. 
A sustainable city will be one that embraces sustainable food systems and restores and recognises the urban metabolism, returning nutrients and water from urban populations back to the landscape in and around the city to grow food for the people living there. There are urban agriculture zones through the heart of Ljubljana, Slovenia. Many people grow their food here in allotments and others trade their surplus at the daily downtown markets. These urban agriculture areas also provide important recreational and habitat corridors that weave the city together. In the winding streets of Veliko Tarnovo, Bulgaria's old capital, every space and corner is used to grow food and flocks of animals are tended in the open spaces. In Hong Kong, a large proportion of the fresh vegetables consumed in the city have been traditionally grown in and around the city itself. A growing trend in many dense cities is weekend farming. Small organic farms in and around the edge of town are setting up to rent parts of their land to urbanites needing to unwind and reground themselves. There are many small spaces in and around the city that can be used for gardening. Places such as the Kaduri Farm and Botanic Garden act as reference, training, research and networking centres for sustainable urban agriculture. They organise local food events, distribute information, materials and provide training and support to local food groups in neighbourhood centres across the region. There are many ways that communities are relocalising their food systems. The six basic forms of community food systems are cooperatives, farmers markets, food box systems, community farms, community gardens and school gardens. It's communities that are driving relocalisation of food and as with many other sustainability initiatives, there are still a number of legal, political and attitudinal barriers that need to be removed or overcome to facilitate the emergence of sustainable food systems on a larger scale. We have the prototypes, the models. Uh, what we need is the political will, uh, the values and the political leadership. Mulaney's Maple Street Co-op is a great example of a successful food cooperative. Established by the community in the late 1970s to enable people to access good food in the area, it's now a multi-million dollar enterprise that continues to be owned and directed by the community for the benefit of the local community. Local food systems are really important because they link farmers and consumers directly. Food boxes make it easier for consumers to access fresh local produce. The convenience of home delivered local organic food boxes is great, especially now with the simplicity of online ordering. And because of this, food boxes are attracting many people. A food box system operates from the organic farmers market in Mullaney. They have a policy of sourcing food as locally as possible and distribute the food directly through the local region. 18 local suppliers um, to count and also the majority of it's grown on the farm in Commondale, which is an A-grade organic property. This farm is nestled in the Upper Mary Valley. It is a small farm producing a wide range of seasonal vegetables and herbs using sustainable practices. They collect their own water, recycle all their scraps back into the soil, they save their own organic seeds, which are propagated year after year, becoming more locally adapted. Like the more traditional mixed farms, they also produce honey, make bread, and they are revitalising the craft of preserving food, which they hope to teach others. And you walk around and there's uh, beautiful red cabbages that just sing with colour, and there's uh, all the broccoli was uh, really nice. Uh, last year I was using lots of squash and zucchini and eggplants and stuff off him and uh, just to see it all in flower and just a really vibrant garden and it's, you know, it's alive. Everything here on a Thursday morning, just about everything here on every morning actually is picked fresh that morning. It's nice to use not just because uh, the money is being kept within local communities but the fact that you know that it's so fresh, you know, it's uh, a day old, less than a day old, picked that morning and you can't ask for more than that really, especially as a chef. If we're eating something that's coming from the other side of the world, we may actually be more likely to be eating the wrong types of foods, which may not benefit the body as much as if we're eating locally and in season. Subscription farming or community supported agriculture is growing in popularity and providing greater security for small, diverse and sustainable farms. A farmer in the Sunshine Coast hinterland has created such a system. 
We sell weekly boxes of food to people and they pay up front through a subscription either monthly or seasonally. Farmers markets are experiencing a renaissance globally, bringing producers and consumers together face to face in a socially dynamic environment. One of the main reasons uh, the markets was um, it started was so that local people could get to know their local farmers and who was growing their food, so bringing that relationship closer. And um, people definitely respond to that and come back for that reason. So um, it creates a really amazing community. There's lots of different aspects of the, of the markets that people can enjoy. So they can enjoy coming into the marketplace and buying from local people and buying organic food. They can go and sit and have a chai and catch up with their friends, um, you know, listen to local musicians busk. All this food is a brilliant uh, location with uh, nice uh, shady trees and the people are, are very friendly. It just provides it's a totally different energy uh, for us uh, and, and a different social interchange than being on our farm. It gets us out of the, out of the place and that's good too. It provides a way for us to sell our excess produce that isn't going out through the boxes. And so we can keep um, in a situation where we've always got a surplus so that if, if 10 customers want to join for the boxes next week, we can say yes and we'll just provide a, take a little less to the market. We need to see urban and community farms woven into the fabric of urban and suburban areas. This can be done by using currently underutilised land and space for food production activities. Also by integrating small polycultural farms into new suburban developments and by placing remnant urban farmland into farmland trusts for protection and to be managed sustainably. These urban farms are integral to restoring the urban metabolism of these areas, using recycled water and absorbing waste nutrients locally and efficiently. Community gardens provide important social and neighbourhood hubs for those seeking to connect with their community and environment and to simplify their lives, lower their impact and their ecological footprint. Community gardens are often venues for farmers markets, food co-ops, or nodes of food box systems. They help to connect people with their food shed and provide places and events where we can celebrate this. Kitchen gardens in schools are a fast growing phenomenon, both in Australia and around the world. The garden programs are being developed in response to many issues, but particularly for improving health and nutrition, working towards environmental sustainability, raising awareness about social justice, and to explore the diversity of cultures that exist in local communities. It's also really easy to grow a significant amount of our fresh greens at home and it's great to be able to share surplus with our neighbours. By eating locally, primarily food that has come only 100 or 150 kilometres from farm to our table, we can significantly reduce the impact of our daily actions and make our lifestyle more sustainable. Where possible, we need to eat even closer, perhaps within 10 kilometres for our basic items. Challenge yourself to eat locally for a month and see what's possible. Organise local food feasts and enjoy celebrating and creating your local food culture. The fabulous thing about food is that we eat every day and hopefully a couple of times a day. So there's an awesome opportunity there, each meal that we have to make a conscious decision to support local farmers and to support sustainable food systems. Or alternatively, to put our heads in the sand and, and to, to just choose the cheapest foods, which, whilst they might be cheapest in economic sense, are by no means the cheapest in environmental or social just terms. By taking responsibility for our food, by supporting local growers and community food systems, we are making a significant contribution to the sustainability of our communities.
locally is perhaps one of the most delicious ways we can contribute to a sustainable future. To find out more, visit localfood.net.au.